Today, I wanted to go ahead and just get right into this Kwame Round video. Um, there were some gems being dropped. It's uh, Kwame Round looking at a video of uh, Jalen Rose being interviewed. Shout out to Jalen Rose for actually having the cojones to go up there and uh, say what he said. Life concepts and solutions. Solutions that meet the moment. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Black mothers, I want you to pay attention. Because a lot of times these boys are coming up in single parent households, but they're still doing great things. So your son can't go get you money in certain sports, right? That's basketball, that's football. I know it's all the black sports, basketball and football for sure. Um, but they can't go get you the money right away. But all the other sports, hockey, baseball, race car driving, he says, all these things you can go right out of high school. Why can't you do that in these other sports? Just for you to go to the league and you could have potentially had a 10 year career, but because you had to go to a college for two to three years, that might have limited your money and your potential earnings because the NCAA has to get their cut. And that, my friends, has to stop. It does. Not only that, but we as 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 a community need to start telling our kids that there's more to it than just playing sports. Yeah. I understand that like a lot of parents can't afford college because college is not doing what we think it's doing. We think that if we go to college that we can, you know, make more money, which is true, but we can't make a shitload more money because our money is always going to be capped when you work for somebody else. So we need to start talking to our kids about entrepreneurship. That's what I'm doing with mine. I'm not talking about college. If he wants to go to college, that's fine. If he wants to go and pursue sports and stuff and he wants to play at the highest level, that's fine. But that's not the end all. We will have a transition plan from that. And he won't have to do and take the, the hard lumps and work the jobs that I had to work because I didn't understand. Because right when I got out of college and I went and played overseas for a couple years and was injury prone and came back, didn't know what to do and had no nowhere to go. Didn't have an education, didn't have anything. I had to take mediocre jobs because I didn't take care of business and there was nobody in my corner to tell me other. Let's continue. Our mama's got to start paying attention. Don't let them trick you into nothing else. They're trying to pull on your heartstrings about dumb shit. They have done some hell of a shit. Eddie Curry, Sagana Jop. These guys are changing the structure of their family at an early age as teenagers. Now, we can call that a bus. You can say whatever. But you, we talk about this wealth gap and having access to wealth. And your sons have been able to do it as teenagers. And it was a lot of them coming. Then they come up with this one and done rule. And a lot of your sons, by the time they get to college, they don't like to coach. They have a little attitude issue. They have one mistake. And it's over. And did I get in trouble when I was at Division One? Yes, I did. And it was all over the newspapers. And I'll let you guys go ahead and look that up and find that out. But yeah, it, it happens. And, you know, as a young 18, 19 year old, 20, 21 year old, you know, you're just coming into your own. You're in a new environment. You're trying to figure things out. But at the same time, you know, you have emotions and you have this way of life for the first 18 years of what you thought was life. And now all of a sudden you're thrust into this college campus and all of a sudden you have to have these study skills. You have to have. Um, time management, all these things that I knew nothing about until I got to the college realm. And so it was a big adjustment. Luckily for me, um, the adversity that it came with being a college athlete was nothing compared to what I came from. So it was a hard adjustment, but I still got it done. Take a person that's from the hood with rough edges all around him and you set him into this middle class suburban lifestyle and he has to adjust. Um, in my case, it was the same thing. You know, I went from wearing blue chucks in the hood and being accepted to wearing blue chucks um, at a university. And it was just a totally different type of atmosphere. But for some reason, you know, I still felt like I wasn't hard and I needed to be hard to let everybody know that just because I'm at this school, Jane, don't fuck with me because, you know, I'm about that life. When nobody at the college is about that life. Then in the herd in college, that's when they train them to start talking like this and start only being one type of guy and we don't like the Allen Iverson type with the crossovers and the tattoos and no we just want the kid that goes to Duke and he just sits there and prop it up and he better acts like this or he's out and that's what you want for your mama's sons 
they didn't let they didn't let you raise him in that type of environment but that's how he got to somehow learn to act how can he do that this is true guys this is absolutely truth um, and just off of my experience alone, when I went to college, they do sit you in a room when you first get on campus and let you know how things are going to be. Mind you, I didn't come from a middle class or upper class upbringing. I came from the gutter, from poverty. There's so many hoops and hurdles that you have to jump through just to make it out. And then when you get to the division one level, division two, junior college, or whatever the case may be, it's a whole different lifestyle. Now, in my um, circle, that's all it was, was football or basketball. I didn't know how to rap, so that was it. Nobody actually sat down and told me that I can go to college and become a doctor or a lawyer or any of those type of things. And so now you go to a university where everybody is there just so that they can get paid off of your performance, all the way down to the coach getting his high price salary and letting you know from the jump that this is a business. And that if you don't take care of business, then you don't get that scholarship the next year. And that's what they hold over you. When you get there, you're expected to hold yourself to a higher standard and to be able to talk and talk to uh, these uh, media outlets. And they take you into a room and they tell you how to stand, make sure that you don't use and and um, make sure you don't say, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature that you know you could use in your adult life. But as a kid, you just don't know because all these questions are coming at you. And whether you do well in the game or whether you do poorly in the game, the questions are coming, whether they're positive or negative, and you have to answer them without an attitude, without taking it personal. And that's a lot coming from kids from the inner city that just don't know how to do it. Let's continue. It's a game they playing with your boys. Stop letting them play these games with your boys. Listening to Jalen Rose, he was with the Fab Five. They changed the way they thought about basketball and black players, really. Before it was all back cuts and all little white boys shooting threes and running and setting back picks and all that. Remember, go watch the evolution of the game. When these all black boys went out there and was whipping to the ass, it was electrifying. It was something they'd never seen before. You know how much money they made off these boys? People still getting residual income. Soon as Chris Webber get, uh, get inducted in the Hall of Fame, they're going to buy his jersey from the college level to the pro level, which is going to make them some more money. You know, all these adjustments and all these things that are happening to you are not happening on the other side. These people, the head coach is making, you know, six figure salary. Uh, the school's making millions of dollars off of tournaments, off of off of your likeness, selling your likeness to these sports um, games and whatever, whatever have you. And so all you have is a scholarship. Now, in the beginning, I thought that that was big, but now as a grown up, you know, a full fledged adult, I know that that was bullshit because uh, if you look at the statistics, a lot of uh, these athletes don't finish college, regardless if you're there for one year or not and however, whatever you've done, uh, like the Chris Webbers and the Jalen Roses, how they excelled and then they left school and went to the NBA, but yet to this day, they're not making any money off of their likeness at the University of Michigan. But Michigan is continually making money off of them. Not only them, but every other athlete that came before them and after them. And so where is the equity in that? Where is the equality and inclusion in making money off of what I did and my hard work? Where is it? What I'm saying is access to wealth can come at 18 for that little boy who's the who's a McDonald's All-American, which every university that he goes to, he makes them millions of dollars. You need to be able to capitalize on your son's likeness. That is your name. That is your name. So I think it's only right that if other sports can do it, then your sport that your son is in should be able to do it. That's just what I'm saying. That's just what I'm thinking. Maybe y'all should come up together, ladies, and think about how many sons that uh, look at Dewan Wagner. Awesome. Sebastian Telfair was able to get a, a shoe deal, movie deal, all kind of things. Now, uh, uh, I heard Dewan Wagner's son is following in his footstep. He probably can be good enough to come out of high school. And if, if, if not for nothing, start sending these kids to HBCUs. Trust me, they'll leave the light on for you. 
So we have to change the narrative, guys. I keep saying that. It's like the theme of all my videos and for the most part, but it's true. We have to change the narrative. We have to start looking at things differently. My son is coming up. He's a basketball player. He plays soccer. And I'm looking at things a lot different than when I was his age. I'm looking at different blueprints right in front of me with today's uh, technology and social media. And so there's different avenues and ways that you can do it. Make sure you guys comment below, subscribe, share these videos. This is Mr. BCS, and I'm out.